Okay guys, so now we're going to compare um, perfect results to random errors and systematic errors. Now, I was really, really happy to see that um, the textbook that we use went about it in exactly the same way I went about it on the board. Um, I hadn't actually consulted your revision book, um, but they went through it in exactly the same way. Uh, so I'll go through that again. I'm going to use the same colours, so blue for our perfect results. So let's say that, actually I should add, if we're comparing uh, two values, so let's say value A and value B, and let's say that the perfect, the ideal results um, are these. So if I had the, if I had ideal instruments and there was absolutely zero error, I'd get this kind of trend line. So if I draw a line of best fit through here, I'll get something like this. Okay, so these are my perfect results, and that's my perfect line of best fit. Now, the good thing with random errors is that, yes, they're errors. If I did each measurement only once, and I was randomly getting values that were too low or too high, I'm going to get a value that's very similar to my true value. Whereas if I've got if I've got systematic errors, and I think I did these in check the board, I did these in green. So if I'm systematically getting values that are too high, then I'm actually going to end up with a trend line that's quite different from the trend line I would get um, if I had perfect instruments. And the same goes for too low. If I'm systematically getting values that are too low, again, I'm really quite far off the mark. So the danger of systematic errors is that you can't really fix them by rounding. And I did this for each individual, um, each individual measurement as well. So if I give you a number line here, and let's say we've got zero here, and um, Let's go to minus one this time, and minus two, and let's go up to, so, one, two, three. Now, let's say the true value that I'm trying to measure is one. A systematic error might continuously give me the value of two. So I get two three times. So if I get if I calculate my average, 2 plus 2 plus 2, divided by, so add them up, and divide them by how many we've got, 3, I'm going to get an average of 2. Now, let's try this with the random errors, and let's say that um, once I get minus 1, so I'm 2 below, another time I get 3, and let's say one time I actually get the right value. So I've got 3, 1, and minus 1. So if we add these together, I've got 3 plus 1, 4 minus 1. Okay, so that gives me 3 divided by the number of values I've got. 1, 2, 3. So 3 over 3 gives me a value of 1. So even though um, I've missed the value by a value, by a factor of two, um, on two occasions, I've actually managed to average to roughly, well, to exactly the right number in this case. Whereas with systematic errors, even though I've been closer um, two out of three times with the number two, once I round that, I've, I've still got the number two, so I'm still quite far away from the true value. So that's the real danger of systematic errors. They, they're very difficult to spot and they're very difficult to correct.